Hi, hi, hi. All right, thanks for inviting me here. My name is Lance Aldrin. I'm 20 years old. I am a cell and molecular biologist and commonly referred to as a lab tech at the Waste Lab for Synthetic Biology at MIT. And I make $87,000 a year. As a lab tech, I spend most of my time in the laboratory doing wet work, moving liquid from tube to tube, such as enzymes, DNA, RNA, using a pipette, which is a liquid handler that could handle very small amount of liquid. That's what I do, like almost every day. Some of my responsibilities, I guess, in more science term, I do clone DNA, which are the blueprint, and then from DNA, I will make RNA. You will transfect that into cells, which will then make a protein product, which you can also measure using few different instruments in the laboratory. And once I've collected those data, some of my team, or there's a part in my team in our laboratory at Ways Lab, at MIT who will analyze it they will process it I also do the same thing but just like what I've said I spend most of my time doing wet work then after we analyze it we will present it in such a way that other people could understand it very easy since not all of the people around our community or in the society are very knowledgeable when it comes to different things that are happening inside our body right especially cells which cannot be seen using the naked eye of a person right so that is how important our job is i guess that's the reason or that's the main purpose why i really took cell and molecular biology back then when i was in college i guess the 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 importance of cell and molecular biology is that everything that we do is for the first time like we get to experience it first we get to create it first or we get to make use of it first especially for the people to benefit since all of the things that we do is for the sake of it's not just in the discovery field i guess i think cell and molecular biologist has really great contribution when it comes to healthcare in different parts of the world right in our main laboratory at waste lab for synthetic biology at mit it is all about these different fields which are coming together like biology, chemistry, physics, electrical engineering, chemical engineering wherein they are all bringing their expertise to tackle a certain biological problem. What mostly done in our laboratories and in other departments is that we are trying to induce systems or processes in cells within the body that we don't have naturally. That is what we are working for right now. That is our main goal right now. You know, for example, just like what we are experiencing right now or for other people. For some chronic diseases, you might take a pill every single day. But instead of taking a pill every day, we can just give you an injection once a month. With that, it can be a lot cheaper. You know, like less manual labor for the patient. Less stress where it can make things better than ever before right so that's what we are really working on right now working in the laboratory is not that easy but it's kind of fun you know like all of the data that we got was not enough or didn't turn out good as what we are expecting whose data will be taken back to the design step because you know nothing is ever perfect in science right so when we start seeing what happened on that certain data Let's say, for example, uh, cancer cells or cells that are differentiated or affected by some viruses or bacteria. When we saw what happened to those cells and we think that we lack on something, we always try to make it better. Then we keep doing it over and over again in iterative design cycle until we get the results which we are happy with and satisfied. That is, the, that is the life of a cell and molecular biologist and other lab techs that are working hard every day for new discoveries in medicines. Another thing that I can share you is all about what we do inside our laboratories.
For example, there's a structural defect in maybe your heart. There's a valve missing, perhaps. You know, a lot of time you will take a surgery for it to cure it or to bring back that missing valve. Surgery can replace that, but the hope for future is that maybe you can put in stem cells. Stem cells that knows how to reorganize themselves. And maybe it can bring back the portion of that organ, right? Because that's possible for stem cells. The future is just there, waiting for us to discover many things that could change and can make people's lives easier. And especially in the field of medicine and healthcare, those methods of us nowadays will be safer, easier, or non-invasive perhaps. It could really change how healthcare systems works, especially nowadays that we are all experiencing this pandemic. There's a coronavirus disease out there and uh, all of us are doing our best to, you know, find a way to cure something and ways how to get rid of this viruses. We always improve. We always do our best for our researches and the discoveries and experiments. I think every discoveries of microbiologists, cell and molecular biologists, lab techs, or those in the field of biochemistry, molecular genetics, biology in general are very important and can contribute a lot when it comes to explaining to people how cells works in our body, how cells function, how cells grow, how cells duplicate or how cells divide, right? How am I created? Things like that. Many people are curious and, you know, curiosity is good but ignorance could be a lot worse for some people. Especially when they don't know how things work inside their body since it cannot be seen by the naked eye. Only those people with equipment using, you know, microscope, electron microscope, fluorescence microscope, which is a really big help for us to make our experiments and tests brought out to life. You know, I remember when I was in second year college, we tend to study these cell and molecular biology techniques, which really helped me a lot, especially now in my field where I'm working for new discoveries. These techniques really boosted my skills and my data gathering processes. I really benefit from it. Those techniques such as electrophoresis wherein molecules line up with their sizes another thing is PCR or polymerase chain reaction it is very important because it is used to strengthen small amounts of DNA for further experiments and it really helped me when I'm gathering DNA samples and stuff like that it is very essential tool for every biologist out there like us to make sure that the DNA is sufficient for our current experiment and for us to get you know satisfying results blotting blotting is very important first year college I experienced blotting in a glass light and up until now I still do blotting every time that's why I told you that I spend most of my time in the laboratory doing wet work and you know it improved my skills when it comes to working in the laboratory. Lastly is cloning. If our team created you know a sufficient induced system or processes that are injected into human's body then cloning is very important in this part since if we find it very very efficient for us to use then we could improve it we can 
make copies of it so that other people will benefit from what we have you know discovered <laughs>